love what is love god is love love is from god god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life the love of god is agape god's love is seen as a gift of his son 1 john chapter 4 verse 9 his love is unconditional his love was a manifestation of his divine will in deliberate choice made without any cause except which lies in the nature of god himself love had its perfect expression among men in the lord jesus christ christian love is the fruit of his spirit in the believer galatians chapter 5 verse 22 christian love has god for his primary object and expresses itself of all in implicit obedience to his commandments john chapter 14 verse 15 christian love it is an exercise towards the brethren or toward men generally is not an impulse from the feelings it does not always run with the natural inclinations nor does it spend itself only upon for whom some affinity is discovered love seeks the welfare of all romans chapter 15 verse 2 and works no ill to any romans chapter 13 verses 8 to 10 love seeks opportunity to do good to all men and especially to them that are the household of faith now is not an emotion emotions are subjected to feelings sight and change in our affections from 1 corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 we read love is patient love is kind and is not jealous love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act selfishly it does not seek its own it's not provoked does not take into account a wrong does not rejoice in unrighteousness but rejoices with the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails this is a description of love god's love is unconditional also god's love is known as agape here in 1 corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 this unconditional love that is described as a source in god we read in this verse that love suffers love suffers long because we have love it takes long time to get angry it therefore means to be patient to be persistent at all times during the time of opposition and difficulty not getting angry easily this love is not easily provoked easily angered remember our lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness the emphasis is unmerited favor and we know that is grace note god clearly disciplines us clearly allows us to suffer the consequences of our sin but never stops loving us it is a love that is abounding in mercy this love is loyal love faithful love loving kindness this is mostly associated with the divine nature of god not human nature of man when we look at the love of god we are reminded that we are sinful and he saved us from sin by his atoning sacrifice and removed our sins yet we at times continue to sin and fall short of his grace but god continues to love us giving us more grace and mercy showing how patient and compassionate his love is we are to love other people not because of who and what we are but because of who god is and what christ did for us in the cross this is the foundation that is why we really have to understand how god's love is and how it impacts our love we have to understand the character of god after all we are the image and likeness of god and we are to reflect that we are being renewed according to his image in our sanctification so we have to understand what love is and that is stable and unchanging immutable love that is consistently faithful never faithless what love is the way most think of love is that affectionate feelings emotional friendship so these are a part of love 
but not the core of love. So the core of love is the word agape, the word that is used for foundation, though it is based on virtue, it's not based on feelings. Based on a choice related to responsibility, this love is loyal, it is respect, it is unconditional, and is focused on what is best for others, not what is best for me. When you put together the core is agape love. It does not exclude emotions, but it's not based on emotions. But in love, there is then the emotional dimension that's much richer, much fuller, and much more dynamic because it is grounded in virtue on which it truly lasts. That is the kind of love that God has for us, and as believers, we are to reflect that in all our relationship. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God and the Lord of his life and acknowledges his substitutionary sacrifice, God abides in him and he is in God. God is love. When we love God, we study the word of God. This leads to spiritual growth after salvation, but it only comes as a result of studying the word and the Holy Spirit producing maturity in the believer. By this we have come to know God because we are obedient, we are keeping his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him. It doesn't mean he is not a believer, but he still is that immature believer and does not reach the point of learning enough doctrine to really know who God is. Once we learn the doctrines, his goodness, it affects the behavior and we become obedient to his commandment. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly has been matured. By this we know that we are in him. And how do you know that love of God is mature in us? It is related to keeping his word. To keep his word, we have to know what it is. We had to make doctrine a high priority in our life. Keeping commandments central to spiritual growth and as a consequence of that filling of the spirit and it's not the cause of filling up the spirit. As we know, waiting and abiding in Him and coming to know Him allows us to have advanced spiritual maturity. Then we are abiding in God and God is abiding in us. This is a process we take in the world under the filling of the Holy Spirit. We meditate on it, we understand it, Believe it is God the Holy Spirit that takes it and breaks it down, converts it into spiritual growth, makes us understand doctrines that we practice through these doctrines. We mature as we are abiding under the filling ministry of God. The Holy Spirit, spiritual growth takes place, maybe slow, maybe it's fast. One day there is a demonstration of love in our personal love life. For God is motivating us and we are beginning to recognize what it means to truly, implicitly, unconditionally love people. For us this is love in maturity. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And one who fears is not perfected in love. Yet John is saying we need to reach the maturity in love. We are not going to have anything to be anxious about, to be fearful of, to be ashamed of at the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, mature love is going to remove that fear from us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. He does not say he who does not love is not born of God and does not know God. He who does not love does not know God. He is still born of God, but he doesn't know God yet. He hasn't advanced to any state of spiritual maturity. Personal love for God must be for the love for other believers. Before we can love one another, we need to come to know God. And to love God, we cannot love one another with agape love. Until we know the truth about the cross, regeneration is a state or basis for reaching the point where we can love God and practice righteousness and sanctification. We need maturity in the truth of salvation to have this condition. 1 John 4, 8. Let me put it again. The person who does not love the believer was not advanced to spiritual maturity. He has not understood his own personal sense of calling and has not grown to the stage where you can really love God and love men. 
because he doesn't know enough doctrine and could not develop a personal relationship with God through abiding in Christ and walking by means of the Holy Spirit. Love from God is God's love. It is divine love. But love from mankind is human love and is directed towards God. We call it vertical relationship. But the personal love that is manifested in us is revealed both to God and others. But we need to love others. Loving one another is love of God. Manifesting God's love and showing the light and truth to those around us. Spreading the good news. This is horizontal relationship. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 God is love. 1 John 4.8 God is embodiment of love. Love is the sense of his being. Now comes from God. God created love. Love is the divine attribute or characteristics. Of course, the love of God is inclusive. God so loved every person in the world. He sacrificed his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All who believe on him would not face eternal condemnation, but have eternal life. The love of God is unconditional. His invitation is open. is universal for every human being, no matter how much he or she has sinned, can enter into love relationship. The love of God is empowering. Jesus Christ died so that we might have life in this world. Through Him to have a life. Through Him who is love to live a life of love. We know in the Bible there are four types of love. The Greek language has terms for four kinds of love. These terms are Philo, Agape, Storge and Eros. The two later Greek terms for love are not mentioned in the Bible. Although we do not see them expressed in certain stories, to better understand filial love, it must be defined as one part of these four terms. First one is eros. Now based on feeling towards another, it is a relationship between man and woman. Song of Songs explains this. Another type of love is philos. It is based on friendship between two people, Mostly starts as friends, then they admire each other, the motions work. It is a patient love, it is allowed based on give and take. Philo love is brotherly love. This type of love is most often shown within close friendships. This is a generous and affectionate love that seeks to make the other person happy with no expectation for the acts of kindness to be returned. David and Jonathan are one of the Bible's best examples of Philo love within a friendship. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 to 3 describes the friendship and says in part that the soul of Jonathan was knit into the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Storge, love in the Bible, the Bible does promise in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God given to you. Here our Lord gives promise for a long life also but with the condition to honor our parents. Last is agape. John chapter 21 verses 15 to 17. God is asking for agape and love to Peter. Peter is expressing philos in this verse. Agape love is unconditional love. It is a selfless love. It is a continuous love. Even if the person receiving that love is insulting towards a person giving it or hating, cursing the giver, still the love is given by praying and forgiving that person. It is an unconditional love. It is for us and towards other. It is God's love in essence. Eros love is physical. Philo's love is mental. Agape love is spiritual. Finally, the love of God is sacrificial. Jesus Christ gave his life so that you and I might have fellowship with God the Father by believing in him. What are the characteristics of divine love? God's love is infinite, limitless, unfathomable. Psalms 103.11 Isaiah chapter 63 verse 7. For all of eternity we shall ponder the love of God and never will fully be able to comprehend it. 
For his love is infinite, God's love is eternal. Psalm 136, 1 to 7, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. God's love is everlasting. God's love is immutable, changeless. How quickly human love can turn to hate based on emotions. God's love is unchanging. As God is immutable, so is his love. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 67. James, chapter 1, verse 17. God's love is holy. It is communicated to us through the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 God's love is always an expression of God's holiness. It is also directed towards producing or in a sinner God's love seeks to make us holy. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 26 Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 to 10 God accepts each person in Christ just as Christ is. God cannot and will not accept our sins in love. God disciplines us more as in love towards holiness. It was necessary for Christ to suffer in order to demonstrate God's love towards us. God's love is sacrificial. God's love is not self-serving, but sacrificial now comes at a high cost. And the one who allows is the one who willingly pays a price. John chapter 3 verse 16, John chapter 15 verse 13, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Love always is a price tag and the lover is gladly and willingly to pay the price from eternity past. God set his love on us and purpose to save us through the sacrificial death of His Son, God's love is sovereignly bestowed by grace. God's love is selective, like the marriage. God's love is likewise, selectively chooses some, not others. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Malachi chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 15. God's love is not given to men because they are lovely, he chooses to love us in spite of a miserable condition. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 7 to 8, Romans chapter 5 verse 8. We can conclude that love is a choice, God's choice, it's a choice of the sovereign grace. The love of God is personal and individual. God's love is one attribute among many attributes. There are other attributes. God's love is a source of human love. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 11, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, God's love is expressed and experienced in Christ. In love, God provided assurance of salvation, not only for the fallen man, but for a fallen creation as well. In love, God sent his son to die on the cross of Calvary, bearing man's sin and offering to fallen men the righteousness of God to those who receive the gift of salvation. Christ becomes a special object of divine love and then they begin to manifest this love towards others. 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 to 10, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19. God's love is the evidence and is in the forgiveness of sin. Can a loving God send anyone to help? The truth is that our loving God sent his son to help for us so that we might have our sins removed and we are given and enjoy the blessings of heaven rather than hell or just punishment in hell. Those who reject God's punishment of his son is in our place must endure the punishment of hell themselves. Hope Hope in Greek is elpizo. It means hope. Hope is a desire of something good on the expectation that you and I will receive it. The stronger our desire, the greater the hope is. By hope we suffer now and wait for the rewards later. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 Without hope we can never fully trust in God with our hearts. Hope is defined as a trust we place in God the object of our hope is important. We place our hope in God and rely on His promises, which means looking forward to what God will do with confidence. Hope is grasping for what we cannot see, but we believe because of the assurance in the hearts from God. Hope brings security. Job chapter 11 verse 18 Hope brings confidence. Psalms chapter 25 verse 3. Hope brings praise to God. Psalm 71 verse 14. 
Hope brings eternal value. Proverbs 23:18. Hope brings strength. Isaiah 40:31. Hope brings goodness. Lamentation 3:25. Hope brings joy. Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Hope brings love. Romans 5:5. 5, 5. Hope brings faith. Hebrews 11:1. 1. God planted hope in the heart of every believer so that we can build a strong relationship of love and trust with him your hope grows by nourishing in the word of god every day hope conveys the idea of waiting being patient enduring in psalms 41 david expresses this kind of steadfast hope i waited patiently for the lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry in the new testament hope is often associated with looking towards Christ's return and security in Christ. His atoning sacrifice secured us the eternal future. When we suffer, we place our hope in Christ and look forward to our rewards with assurance and joy. When we face dire situations, we cry out to the Lord. Then we come to know about the Lord. The true hope acknowledges that the Lord as the sovereign creator who never fails, in hope we always turn to God, never away from God. We can get to the Lord even in our lowest moment and He hears our cry. God knows all our sins and He still offers forgiveness and opportunity to be in relationship with Him. We are greatly encouraged by hope. Hope helps us to secure our confidence. Hope makes Christ our anchor and trust in hope. He releases us from shame so we can praise and serve God. It is both powerful and loving. There is power and love. The power without love makes me tremble before His judgment and condemnation if He had allowed without power. We might worry that He could never deliver on His promises to save, but His love never fails and His power never weakens. Hope promises that the rest and assurance that is there. So we can hold on to the trails now because of the glorious future that awaits us. It reminds us of our relationship with God. Joy gives hope the strength. Hope is the reasonable expectation of something desired. The Bible describes hope, confident expectation. As door, Hosea chapter 2 verse 15, hope is a door for escaping present troubles and entering a brighter path. As anchored, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19, hope gives a reference point for our lives and causes us to live differently in order to receive the hope for reward. 1 John chapter 3 verses 2 to 3, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 12. As helmet, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 5, hope protects our mind from the blows of life and gives us the perseverance to keep going when others would quit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 The Christian hope is Christ and in Christ 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Those who do not have Christ have no hope 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 You are God my savior and my hope is in you all day long Psalm 25 verse 5 Hope placed in mortals die with them all the promises of the power comes to nothing. Proverbs 11, 7. When the wicked dies, his hope will perish, and the expectation of wealth perishes too. False hope hence at death. Hope that is placed in powerful people of wealth or prestige cannot survive, and it cannot save. As we continue our study, we will see how greatly this contrasts with our hope placed in God. Put your trust and hope on God. God, He has all power. And he has unfailing love. Our God is capable of being a refuge for us. And he also cares for us. He is the only person to put our hope and trust. Peace. The word peace in the Bible from the Greek word irene refers to a mental attitude of tranquility based on a relationship with God in the Christian way of life. Peace in the Bible in Hebrew means shalom or salom. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 refers to the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Peace is a state of tranquility or quietness of spirit that transcends circumstances. The term peace described in scripture as a gift from God and congruent with this character. 1 Thessalonians chapter 
5 verse 23, Galatians chapter 6 verse 16, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. The initial peace that comes from having our conscious wipe clean grows as we get to know God better. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. When we grow in understanding of the depths and riches of God's love towards us, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 18 to 19, Romans chapter 8 verses 38 to 39, our minds and spirits begin to rest in His power and wisdom. We begin to understand that He really will make all things work together for our good. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. We learn that his purpose will be accomplished. Psalms chapter 33 verse 11, Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21, Isaiah chapter 45 9, Isaiah chapter 46 9 to 11. Jesus said, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John chapter 14 verse 27 We come into the presence of the Lord through His Son. John chapter 14 verse 6 When we allow Jesus' death and resurrection to purchase our forgiveness from God, we are counted as righteous. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Our sins are forgiven because Jesus already paid the price for them. Only then can we have peace with God. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 Romans chapter 5 verse 1, 1 John chapter 4 verse 10, the peace of God can be described as tranquil state of appreciation faith when we submit to and trust the commandments of God and Christ. It requires a mixture of humility and courage to experience God's peace, seeking beyond the mere abilities of our own understanding. Peace of God is there in a believer when he accepts Christ as his Savior. The enmity that was there is no more. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is removed when we get forgiveness of sin. Through the atoning sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Peace is there when we acknowledge the sovereignty of God. He is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent and He controls our life as He comes and dwells in us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit at salvation. Peace with God is an objective peace. It doesn't come from within ourselves. It is not something we can obtain. It is something we are freely given. It is a gift from God, a gift given by Jesus when He saves a repentant sinner. We know that Jesus paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. And when we repent and trust in Him, He is faithful to forgive our sins and save us. Jesus absorbed the wrath of God that should have been ours. He made peace with God for us and He gives us that peace in our salvation. This peace is a fact, not a feeling. It is free and it is forever. It can never be destroyed or even Diminished. It is a secure peace with the Almighty God of all creation because of Jesus' finished work. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of God is a subjective peace. We have it when we experience the peace that comes through trusting Jesus. This peace is also given to us by God freely and generously. It produces in us a feeling of well, but it is something that we must actively pursue. In our salvation, God gave us the Holy Spirit, who is also called the Comforter. One of His many jobs is to impart the peace of God to us. We are also promised from God's Word that Jesus' grace is sufficient in all things. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9-10 to this is a blessing and a comfort. It is something we must remember every minute of every day. When we keep our eyes on Jesus and rightly remember who He is, what He has done for us, and who we are in Him, we experience the calm and peace of resting in Him. This is how we receive the peace of God. It's a choice to keep our eyes on Jesus, our hearts devoted to Him, and our minds continually being renewed in His Word. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6-7 to Be anxious for nothing, 
but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Faith What is faith? Greek word for faith is pistos. It means belief and trust but demands obedience. No obedience is false faith. Faith results in love, serving love, not sentimental love. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, trusting in something you cannot explicitly prove. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. Faith is a constant conviction that God will do what he says he will do. We are to believe what the Bible says and trust and obey it. We are to believe the promises of God and live accordingly. We have to agree with the truth of God's word and be transformed. Our focus should be on God. It is through faith. Object of our faith is God. God always honors faith. Our faith is tested and tried by trials and temptations. Through faith, we are born into eternal life by faith. We are declared righteous before God by faith. We are healed by faith. We understand the mysteries of creation by faith. We learn God's word by faith. We understand things to come by faith. We walk by faith. We overcome the world by faith. We enter God's rest by faith. We are controlled and empowered by the Holy Spirit by faith. Faith in two dimension. We put our faith on things that are promised in the future. Then we put our faith on things in the present that are invisible. Hope is faith focused on future things. God should be the object of our faith. We can only please God by faith in everything we, we do to God. That which is not from the source of faith is sin. Every aspect of the relationship with God should be through faith. Faith is the source of a strength, provision, courage or guidance and victory over Satan. Faith sustains us in persecution. We need to know how to get and grow in faith. How do you walk in faith? One, we need to hear God. For that, we need to read the word of God. Be in fellowship. We need to have a relationship. We need to pray. That is here. We need to listen to God. It can be difficult, but we need to listen. We need to trust God. We can make mistakes. So trust. We need to obey God. Obey. We need to give Him thanks and praises to Him in all circumstances. We can experience God's blessing in our life. For this, we need to focus on God and not on things around us which make us lose our focus. Without trusting the Lord, we cannot obey. Without listening to God, we cannot trust. Without hearing the word, we cannot listen. Without giving thanks and praises, we cannot have a relationship. Without all this, we cannot experience the blessings from the Lord. There are different stages of faith. One little to great, three perfect faith. For our faith to be strong, we need to focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord, not on things around us. Focus on the Lord with a complete trust that He will do what He wills for our sakes and His glory. Focus on the Lord believing He will do it according to His will in His time. Faith stays strong when we do not waver in our focus and thoughts on the Lord. When we focus on our feeling and not on the Lord, then faith becomes wavered. Jesus made a promise to those who believe in Him. The same Holy Spirit that enabled Jesus Christ to live a sinless life in this world. When he was both human and divine in nature, when Christ was in this world, the Holy Spirit filled his human nature. After his atoning works and ascended to the right hand of God, he sent the comfort of the Holy Spirit to indwell in us, to do his work. The Holy Spirit sustains, enables, and passes to do his work according to his will. The Holy Spirit takes over us and controls us, guides us in our thoughts and actions. Every believer in this age is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Spirit happens when we are born again. The Spirit indwells in all believers. 
Because the Holy Spirit lives in every believer, we can live a spiritual life that was not available to the Old Testament saints. We are not filled with the Holy Spirit until we have faith in the promises of the Word of God. The Holy Spirit empowers us for overcoming temptations. He teaches us God's Word and guides us. He empowers us so we are effective in the ministry. The feeling is by faith. It is a moment-by-moment -moment act. A spiritual gift is God-given ability. It is once and for all a gift that enables us to fulfill God's calling for us. The fruit of the Spirit is manifested in our life. God has plan and path for saved believers. Plan that we obey and trust Him and follow His will. Path. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is attained by indwelling in the word of God and also having a relationship and fellowship with prayer. Conclusion. May the Lord bless these words and keep it in our midst.